from the southern tip of Africa comes a voice of revival. A voice revealing God's truths and desires for our lives. A voice equipping saints with the practical application of God's Word. We've got to have a firm foundation and that's the Word of God. So have your Bibles, notepads and pens ready as we get into more practical application from God's Word. Now all that's required is for us to have an absolute trust in this Word. Let's join Alan back for more wisdom for life. Hello my dear friend and welcome back to Wisdom for Life and my name is Alan Bagg. Today we are doing a study on trust in the blessing. You know the blessing is God's empowerment. It's that word that enables multiplication, it enables growth, it enables His kingdom to operate. It is given to each and every believer. We need to learn what it is and learn to trust it and when we do we'll see great things happening. Enjoy this. I'll see you later. Open your Bible at third letter of John. It should just fall open there. And then that other place where your Bible also falls open, Galatians 3. You know what I was praying there is such a reality to me. David wrote in the 23rd Psalm. He said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And he goes on how God leads him. Even when he's going through tough times, even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. How many of you have had the shadow of a dog bite you? Can that happen? Can a shadow harm you? You see, the devil will make the shadow seem big and ugly and dangerous. Isn't that right? He says, though I go through the valley of the shadow of death we think it looks like death this is over it's finished it's gone no it's a shadow death has lost its sting jesus paid the price he destroyed death itself only people that can still experience death are those that reject the life that he's given that jesus has given because if i reject the life that jesus has given that person's already dead are you with me spiritually? The moment you're born again, uh, you don't even have to worry about the body because he says, don't, you know, if people fear those who can take the body. That's not the one you need to worry about. It's the one that can kill your soul. And so we are born again. We will never die. Our bodies will expire, but we, you and me, will never die again. Come on, give Jesus praise for that. And so... That life is within us. So if we're going through a situation that looks like death, it's the shadow. But he says, even if I walk through that, I fear no evil. Why? You're with me. You're with me. And your rod and your staff comfort me. And what's his next statement? You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Isn't it interesting that they always read that psalm at funerals? He's not talking about the dead man in the box. Hello. He's done on this planet. And if he's serving Jesus, he's right now in heaven. Isn't that right? And how many enemies do you think there are in heaven? No enemies. That psalm's not for him. Oh, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil. He's gone. He's, there's no more death involved here. Hello. Amen. Body's decaying, but he's still alive. He's with Jesus. There's no evil in heaven. Prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. The enemies aren't in heaven. The enemies are here on this earth. That sounds for you and me. The Lord is my Shepherd, it's for born again people. David wrote it, but it was for those that are saved. Are you with me? And so when he says you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That tells me enemies are an opportunity. We have to renew our minds to these things. 
You're a Christian. I don't understand it. Everybody's against me. Everybody's coming. And people are hurting me. Don't stop that. You got enemies? Yes. Praise God. Look around. Look around. You an enemy? Yeah. There's a table somewhere. Yeah. There's an opportunity. Hallelujah. Anyone dares come against me? Man, God's getting ready to increase me. You must understand these things. David could write that confidently. See, as I've said before, it's not his family that left him a great inheritance. Brothers never helped him. All your family's debts will be paid off. All your debts will be paid off. And you get the king's daughter as a wife. He said, let me add him. I'll take him down. Why? Covenant. Everybody say covenant. Say it again. See, we've got to learn to trust that blessing. Trust the power of the blessing established in that covenant. That's why John could confidently write in verse 2 of 3 John, he says, Beloved, I pray you prosper in all things. All things. And there's still Christians today that are wondering whether they should be partaking, whether they should be digging into these things. They, they feel like, Am I, do I deserve this? Am I worthy? I don't know, that's not... God, surely it's not that, no, God wants to get me. I mean, look at my life. I'm a, I'm a worm. I, I mean, yeah, he, he saved me, but you know, I really didn't deserve it. Christians are living below what God has prepared for them. See, the Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, that Christ has redeemed us from the curse. Of the law. Having become a curse for us. For it is written. Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Why? Verse 14. So that. The blessing of Abraham. Might come upon the Gentiles. In Christ Jesus. That we might receive. The promise of the spirit. Through faith. Now family you must understand. That that statement is coming out of covenant talk. Notice it says in verse 29 that if we are Christ's, then we are Abraham's seed. And heirs according to the promise. Heirs. 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 What's an heir? H-E-I-R. What's an heir? Someone that inherits something. We are heirs, not going to be. Why? The testator has died. That's why Jesus had to die. But unlike anything that will happen, you know, in our lives, let's say one of our family leaves something and it's in the will, but the will's dated 1960 something. Then what happens? The family start arguing. And I spoke to grandpa last week. That's not what he meant. He wanted this as let us old now. And we, people start arguing. Then they've got to go to court and everything over that. And then let's say people start saying, well, no. And they get witnesses. Yeah, no, this is what Grandpa said. I, you weren't supposed to get it. I was supposed to get it. And there's witnesses. Yeah, no, that's what Grandpa said. But what happens when Grandpa walks in the room? 
Now, it doesn't matter what anybody heard or thought. Grandpa will tell you what he meant. Are you with me? That's exactly what happened when Jesus died. He settled this will and then rose from the dead and now oversees it. Hallelujah. And so this is the covenant that he's promised us as heirs of the promise. Remember, that's the covenant that he spoke over Abraham. That covenant that he declared to Abraham. And we're going to learn that that blessing, when God gave that blessing, he wasn't just flouting off something. That thing was sealed in a covenant. And then Jesus came, and we've just read, he made sure that that same covenant, the exact covenant of provision, of blessing, of protection, of healing, of everything that God has available, was sealed in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Come and have a look here, Jeremiah. Chapter 17. Now this is a portion we read when we were talking about the love of God. But it came so alive to me when I, when we talk about this covenant. Jeremiah 17, verse 5. Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength whose heart departs from the Lord. Now remember, when you look at various systems of rulership, we've been through all of them, uh, a lot of them, over the centuries. I wasn't alive for all of them, but... You know, there was uh, kings and there was auto, you know, we, uh, autocracy where one man rules. There's, you know, all kinds of different methods of rule. And then uh, we've seen democracy and then there's also socialism. Mm. Now, socialism is the arm of the flesh. In other words, we trust man. Mm. What can man give me? Now, this is not a political speech. Don't no, just throw that thing away right now. It's not even what we're talking about. We're talking about the word. Socialism is exactly that. Trusting the social system to take care of our needs. In other words, man must take care of me. Man must give me a house. Man must give me a job. Man must give me back what some other man took. We're trusting the man. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And that's exactly why people are stuck in a curse. Because they're trusting man. I thank God I don't have to trust a man. How many say amen to that? I thank God I don't have to trust the government system. I don't have to trust people. I don't have to trust my boss. I don't have to trust, I don't have to trust anybody. Because my trust is not in man to take care of me. And he says here, the person that trusts in man and makes his own flesh his strength is a cursed man. For he will be like a shrub in the desert. Remember the King James says a heath, a dried up, shriveled up, salt pan plant. It's got no nourishment in it. And will not see good even when it comes. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness. In a salt land which is not inhabited. And so even when good happens to somebody like that. They don't see it. Because they just focused on how much they've been hurt. And how much they have lost. And how much they don't have. And how much people don't care about them. And how every the systems let them down. So even when something good happens. They still don't see it. It's what the Bible says. That will explain a lot of what's happening. Amen? Around us. Now notice verse 7. Blessed. 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 And we've been here long enough to know that blessed is more than just a little Christian greeting. Bless you brother. Bless you. 
or when someone sneezes. Oh, the word blessed carries life in it. The Bible says when God blessed man, that man became life. Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, and take dominion. He was empowered to succeed, empowered to prosper. If you want to say, the blessing empowers me to prosper. Beloved, I pray you prosper in all things. That's the work of the blessing. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Doesn't trust in man, trusts in the Lord. Now, if you look in your Bible, that Lord is a capital L, big capital L, and then small capital O, capital R, capital D. Now, whenever you see it written that way, that's the tetragrammaton. That's those four letters, that Hebrew, Yad, He, Vav, He. That name, the name, the name, the name that early Jewish scholars didn't even say. Over time, we put vowels in there and made it Yehovah or Jehovah. But that Yad Hey Vave, that's the name, the name above all names. That's the name. That was given to Jesus after he had conquered sin and death. Amen. That name. See, when you say the name of Jesus, you're invoking yeah. yod hey, vav hey, And demons shudder and fall to their knees. They can't stand in the presence of that name. See, people that don't understand that will never see the power because they just throw Jesus out there. When you know there's a name. That he carries a power that that own demons shudder and shake and cannot. They flee before that name. See, it's when you say those that trust in the Lord, when you see the Lord put in there the name, those who trust the name are blessed. In other words, when you invoke that name, you know you're invoking that blessing. You trust that blessing. Why? Because it's the very power of God. The very life force of His creation. I don't wonder if it works. I don't wait to see. I know when God speaks... It is done. You'll be like a tree planted by the waters. Who spreads out its roots by the river. Will not fear when heat comes. When problems happen. There's no fear. Why? Because I know the name. I trust the name. I know the blessing that I have. In the covenant of God. And I trust the blessing. You will not fear when heat comes. But its leaf will be green. And will not be anxious in the year of drought. Nor will cease from yielding fruit. Now that word green. It's interesting when you look it up. <laughs> what do you think it means? Prosperous. It's the same Hebrew word. Another translation, a Hebrew um, commentary says, luxurious. His leaves will be luxurious. <laughs> See, the man, the woman that trusts that blessing. See, we're talking about covenant talk here. Covenant. See, this... This is the things that David understood when he wrote this kind of thing. In the Psalms. He said, trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Trust the name. Trust.
trust that blessing. See, David lived a covenant walk with God. And that covenant was so heavy on him. There were times that when he was just thinking after his friend, uh, Jonathan, had, had been killed. And he was... He had cut that covenant with Jonathan. He was a covenant man. He walked in covenant. That covenant got to him. He'd he'd wake up every day. How? I've got a covenant. How do I exercise this? How do I, how do I, I've got to live out this covenant. He's a man. He's generous. And he's got to be generous somewhere. Can you imagine being woken up and harassed by generosity? He's trying to figure out, i got to work this covenant because this generosity is for covenant. And that's where he says, is there no one from the house of Jonathan? They said, well, there's a young man, Mephibosheth. But you know, he, 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 they, they, they thought you were an evil man. And, and Saul had lied to him. It was his grandson. It made David look like he's the, the villain. And so when David had conquered and he is taking over that kingdom, they said, he, he's, he's going to kill everybody. He's going to kill everyone, everybody, everybody. And there were some that had to be executed because of their crime. But Mephibosheth believed, he, he was brought up with those lies. And so... His, his uh, nurse ran with him, but as she was running, she tripped and, and crippled this man. And you can just imagine, he's, he's all twisted and crippled, and he's trying to walk, and he's thinking, David, this is David's fault. And he's living in fear in Lodibar. Lodibar, I mean, Lodibar was the cursed place. It was despicable. It was, it was, the, it was a pigsty, if you can put it that way. Terrible place to live. He's out there in the outback somewhere, out of fear, crippled, mean. Can you imagine when news came out, when David said, find him, and the royal decree goes out, and you know when royalty travels, it doesn't travel in one or two. I mean, there is a major caravan on its way. Horses and flags and trumpets and banners and everything. And he sees and news is out. David is coming to get you. People that understand the kingdom of God, understand the purposes of God, God has prepared this year. If you've been listening, God has positioned you, He's equipped you, He's prepared you, He's enabled you, He's empowered you, and it's for a purpose. That purpose is about to manifest. This conference is probably the the highlight of the year. It's just just exciting to be here. It's awesome to be here. Oh, it's been awesome. I've been having a good time. The Word. The Word works for me. You can feel the Holy Spirit. From the moment you come in. Very, very excited, very blessed, very anointed. The possibilities are going to show up. The opportunities are going to show up. But only those that are equipped and positioned will be able to access them, will be able to penetrate them, will be able to tap into them. What the Lord is saying is prepare. prepare. When I go out here, I will, I will be able to share some of this that I've experienced here, take it back to my own. It's a whole life change. The anointing and the grace is opening up for you unlimited possibilities. empowerment that enables us to live in the fullness of what Jesus died for. After Pastor Alan praying for me um, and 
really just, you know, standing in faith and agreement with me. Um, I got what I really desired and, you know, God, God did a one day in my life. I have received two increases every year and two bonus. I mean a 13th and a 14th check. Make a choice not to live in poverty. Trust the blessing. God began man's life with the blessing. He has spoken that blessing through the ages. He has kept it alive and Jesus became a curse to redeem us from the curse so that the blessing could come into our lives. We need to believe that. It is ours. We've received it. Now we just have to trust it. Get a hold of the series. It's a four-part series. We can't do everything on these messages, but you can get the CDs, listen to them over and over. And what that does is it empowers you, builds your faith, and you will learn to walk trusting the blessing. When you do, when you put your faith in it, you'll see that blessing go to work and produce what God desires for your life. So make sure you get yours today. Now, my dear friend, if this is the first time that you've been watching this program, or even if you've watched it before, but you've never yet given your life to Jesus, I want to pray for you today. He loves you. He gave His life for you. He died for you. And then He rose from the dead. And today he's alive. And all you have to do is believe that. Now pray this prayer with me. Say this. Dear Jesus, I believe that. I believe you're alive. And I'm calling you my Lord today. I call you my Savior. And I know because I do this. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. And from this day on I live for you. To serve you. To worship you. I'm a child of God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. My dear friend, if that's the first time you prayed that prayer, I have a gift for you. Now, this is a little card that explains to you what happened. Also a guideline, a study program for you. And this CD, My Christian Passport Out of This World of Failure Into His Kingdom of Victory. I want to give that to you as a free gift. I'll even pay the postage on it. You just write us or call us on that phone number. Let us know. And I'll, as soon as I've got your details, we'll make sure that you get that today. Well, God bless you. Now, that's all we have time for today. Tomorrow we're going to carry on once again. I look forward to being with you there. This is Alan Bagg reminding you that Jesus is Lord. And remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Alan Bagg Ministries has made the teaching from today's Wisdom for Life program as well as the entire series of teachings available on CD and DVD. To order this teaching or series, contact us at this number or these addresses and we will send it to you as soon as we can. 